doing good. How are you? Good. You look so good. Thank you. You're look giving you. pain. <laughs> energy. Of course. All the girly, wholesome vibes. I mean, we look so good. We look very good, boss. Come with me on your cover. Thank you so much for having me. I'm like, so happy. My first cover ever. I was really? So oh, man. Like, that's dope exciting. stuff. That's exciting. Apart I'm really excited because also, like, our previous covers have been having, like, a lot of, you know, more senior people. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting to have this fresh, beautiful energy, this fresh face, and this you can like this young, <laughs> awesome vibe. Thank it's you. It's beautiful. Thank and you're so, so proud much. of you. And also so honored to be able to tell your story the way you've allowed us to, you know, in pictures. Yes. So <laughs> I wonder how those look. Like, I mean, I mean like, they look amazing. I mean, you really love them. Those. This is a cover that you're going to be so proud of because I think what we do, we are very intentional about how we tell our stories okay. and how we portray you. Okay. you know? So you have the final say on everything and the story itself uh, because the idea behind Anush is to make people comfortable but okay. also to we're not a tablet we're not trashy we're just here to tell your story and to celebrate fire. you to give you flowers okay. as young as you are I like that I'm excited <laughs> apart from the horse killing me at the shoot oh, guys you look so flying with the horse next to you though it was biting me like definitely it's keen on all of this Two more minutes. Let's get the real. Don't run away. Like, don't run. Just stay. Don't run, Mudisa. Yeah. Oh, all of this. That horse was feeling on all of this. I love it. So let's start off. I mean, you start off as a dancer and you have blossomed into this magnificent superstar that has taken over the world. Yeah. And was this always the plan for you? Uh, the plan wasn't to. The plan was to be a global superstar, I just didn't know how. Yeah. So I think obviously through manifesting my whole life and through God being a big part of my life. Yeah. Yeah, he just blessed me with being an artist and it's quite hectic, I will lie, but I mean, it's it's a blessing at the end of the day. How would you say you got discovered? Because, I mean, you are, we li you live in the age of social media yes. and the next thing there's this dancing sensation and you're like, oh, who's this? Why is she so perfect? Yeah. Is, is that how it happened? Well, yeah, basically, I just went viral off a dancing video mm. uh, and then I got an opportunity to be on like a job song, you know, mm -hmm. but apart from that, it was always just the viral moments that I just kept on creating. Yeah. Even in the just the most natural setting, because my intention was not to go viral. Yeah. It was just the thing of, I'm a gassy girl who likes dancing on top of tables and everything. Yeah. Happy that is actually going to change my life. Beautiful. That and is then, exciting. It's inspiring. Thank you. So when did you realize that you were very talented and wanted to pursue this career? Ah, over time, every day from a young age. Yeah. I mean, when I was four years old, I was always getting paid money, you know? Yeah. Just to ah. dance, you know? I was the Bula Circle type of kid nice. in the family. Nice. So when your visitors, they're like, come on, come on, come on, come on, dance for us. But I used to get paid. Like, I love it. I used to be racked up. Like, yeah. she's getting on yes. off my career. So, which was dope, but. It's a, I think it's always just been a calling, like, mm. you know, it's a natural thing. And sometimes the intention is not to, when you're young, you're thinking, I just want to be a superstar, sure. but you just don't know how. For sure. And God just made it possible. I love it. And you are in your early 20s. The industry is quite brutal. Yeah. And very quick to replace women. Yeah. Um, you know, how have you managed to carve a path for yourself? Like, such a brilliant path also. And they have such a very strong, visible brand. I think just being organic and intentional, like, mm. I've always... From the moment I got that opportunity to blow up, I realized that th this is not going to come ever again. Yeah. But in everything of me existing in that space, I was very intentional to make sure that even if four years down the line, my brand still stands, even if I'd want to go into business, yeah. the brand still needs to stay strong, sure. you know? So from that, I was very intentional with everything that I've done up until this is like my fourth, fifth year. So if I might decide to go into business probably soon, then leave the music game. I don't know. We'll see. Is that even the plan? Is that something yeah. you consider? Yeah. After being a global superstar, probably going into business, depending on just how it business is. Business are not going to give up anytime soon. No, no, no. Not right now. <laughs> this is my retirement plan. Okay. Okay. okay I'm okay. studying a lot of. I love it. Go to the plan. Yes. I love that. Definitely business. I think yeah. there just needs to be more to a person apart from just For sure. talent, you know, so even if it's selling product, mm. just more inspiring, especially as a young black woman in South Africa, mm. like, I've never heard a story like, 
that. So. so what are you most passionate about? I mean, you are already carving your retirement plan at 20, how old are you? I'm 23. Imagine, at 23, you're already thinking retirement. So so what what other things give you life? What other things do you see yourself getting into? When you say business, it's yes. quite vast. Yes. What would you see yourself doing? So I would see myself going into fashion. Mm -hmm. I'd see myself going into like, um, I was trying to invest, like any anything that would just roll my business. Mm -hmm. I was really thinking of opening a dance studio nice. this year. So please do it. Yeah, I want to entertainment. I'll come, please. Yeah, I'll come teach you. Come, come Thank through. You. I'd appreciate that support. Yeah, like yeah. so the dance studio will be my first thing. Maybe releasing a sneaker, Beautiful. like just fashion. Mm -hmm. Top forward. I love it. Also because these are things that are very much you. So it's not like I'm gonna be going uh, not to too far off. Yeah, like, <laughs> like kitty, please pay kind insurance cover. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes, those are very much you. Uh, is it difficult to kind of maintain a healthy work-life balance as a young person? Because I, I, I understand you have to have a social life to yeah. kind of keep you sane. Yeah. Is it difficult to find time for yourself? It's not difficult to find time for myself. I think one thing I've realized, especially in this past two years, it's very difficult to have a social life, especially when you're in a position of being a superstar. Sure. Like, it just becomes very hard and now it's like okay maybe you don't want to work as much as you do anymore but the only thing that you used to is working and being home yeah and now it's like you all quit around people like i've experienced like i have hectic anxiety because mm -hmm. i'm always used to just working like it's yeah. work yeah gig. now you don't know what to do with it i don't know what to do social with settings. Yeah. i understand that i get it but but do you find it difficult to trust people to let people into your space as, like, even friends like partners potential partners don't even have friends don't even have a Hard. Yeah, it's That's like hard. you're young, you're vulnerable, mm -hmm. you only have your family, which is cool. At least That's because you don't trust the intention. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't trust intention because at first people come with clear, clear intentions in the beginning, but I've got burnt so many times that right now I'm just in a safe space yeah. and it's more peaceful, but it, it does suck because. You also do want to have friends to go on vacations with, sure. so... Have fun with your peers. Yeah, talk with your peers. Yeah, yeah, but ugh, intention always changes. Especially if you're in a position of having everything yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Some of your but friends... also in a position of power, in a position of... There's an anointing in this space that you're in, where you yeah. operate, because... And you don't want that to be tainted by just anybody. Energy is so important. Energy is really important. Energy is so important. But it's like also jealousy is very easy. Mm -hmm. And even in just, okay, I'm going to see Bonnie. Bonnie's a boss. Bonnie has, and it's she, Bonnie can swipe anything, anytime. And right now it's like my peers at 23, they're still trying to find their For feet, sure. which is fine and acceptable. Like I'm with you as friends because sure. of who you are. But it becomes hard when the intention now is like, you need to spend on me. Mm -hmm. You need to yeah and the entitlement also that comes yeah with. it's just so hectic so i don't have friends right now okay so is, that means you're also not dating no oh that sucks that sucks but who you who if you were to date what, you, what, what would you look for in a partner i think i'd look for somebody who's consistent somebody who's caring somebody who's very nurturing hmm. i would look for a leader most of all because i need somebody who can kind of lead me around like i'm a very mature woman but I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with somebody just taking power like just Absolutely. being yeah because especially if i own i have quite a big team and i'm always the leader you know so it would be dope to kind of be also baby by someone nice. who's just outside your dad because yes. baba's dad baba's baby comes with a bit of of course, there's yeah. this age. Yeah, like yeah. a certain level of you can't do this, whatever. But and I'm still going to count to Baba as a manager because that's a very interesting dynamic that, yeah. I, that I've observed and I truly love it because I'm just like, it's so, it's so beautiful. It's but we're going to talk at length about that. Okay. I want to know who inspired you to get into the industry. Also, who inspires you now in your space? And you're just like, I want to be as great. I want to be, even if they're not performers, but like, you're just like, I love your resilience. I love your strength. Who, who, who drives you? Like, what drives you? Who do you look up to? Uh, I think right now it's definitely giving brenda fassi mm -hmm. definitely giving michael jackson yes, definitely giving lebu i see that resemblance so much yeah. in myself yeah uh right now i'm not really inspired i'm uninspired i think i'm going through that phase of there's really nobody like there's mm -hmm. nobody to look to especially in our industry right now mm -hmm. it just feels very it's the same thing yeah. all the time yeah so i'm going mm -hmm. through that thing of okay 
I'm bored now. Mm. So what is supposed to happen? Yeah. Yeah. So what in, in, in times of not being so inspired, what, what what do you then do to kind of create stuff because you were creative as well? Yeah. What do you what do you then what how do you draw inspiration? Like do you go to the studio still as uninspired as you are? <laughs> I just black out, find me in Cape Town. Nice one. Nice, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. I ain't even gonna do that. I just feel like you need to kind of find the inner child in yourself. I love that. Because that's what keeps you inspired. And I battled with that a lot until JR Echo is actually my friend. He's a dope photographer, by the way. But he's learned how to kind of balance mm -hmm. his inner child with work and hustle, you know? He'll be go-karting and everything and just living his life. So I realized, like, yo, Find a place where you're not a celeb. Yes. And then just go live as a child. I love it. I so I did uh, publicity for Nasty C. Okay. For his last, uh, the Zulu Man with Some Power yeah. the album. And one of the beautiful things he did, he would go to Japan. Mm -hmm. Japan is not a big superstar. People don't really know him. And there he was living. He was like on the train. He was going just to being a normal he person. Like he loved it. Like and he felt so normal because he struggles with that here. He can't go to a shopping mall without being noticed. You know? So I it's love it. Hard. You're actually doing that for yourself, finding those pockets of joy outside. It's beautiful. Of just existing. Not yeah. that I ain't famous in Cape Town, but I mean, in Cape Town, you know. <laughs> it's different. It's different. It's different. <laughs> okay, so you travel the world, you perform on world stages, yeah. you've been everywhere. What's, what, what's that one place that really stands out for you and why? Paris. Mm, why? I like the scenery, yes. I like the lifestyle, I like how easy it is to get around Paris. You can be in so many different places at once. Oh, I can go on. Okay. I just love Paris. I think Paris is that one city where I just find myself. Yeah. You know, people always love Paris. I never used to get it. Yeah. Amsterdam is lit as well. Mm. Yeah. Paris and Amsterdam. Beautiful. I think those are the two places. Okay. So, uh, how would you describe your childhood? How How was your childhood? My childhood was pretty interesting. I uh, grew up, obviously, dad well off, but mom very like... My mom... I was, I was always in a balance of poor and... And well off. And not well off, but like a Ford. Yes. yes. My dad yes. was a person who hustled, but my mom was, you know, a different situation. And I think that was my biggest blessing because I could actually see both areas of life and actually decide which life I want to be in and also get motivated up. Actually, I need to take this woman out of the hood, you know? But it was just really like inspiring at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, one weekend... Oh, did you go to mom? Yes. One weekend I met moms. It's like my mom is very supportive. I think she's also built who I am. Yes. My dad was very strict. So when I actually started gigging low key, my dad didn't know my mom was the one allowing me to go to these yeah. places. Because oh, she was very like, be free and find yourself, you know? And apart from a controlled environment like my dad, obviously his intention as well. But if you're trying to find yourself in a, such a big world, I do think you should be guided. And that's For what sure. my mom did. Yeah. So uh, with my mom would be like, okay, I know you have friends, but I'm your best friend. So come back to me and tell me if you kiss the boy, if you like a boy, yeah. and I can really advise you to protect you, but yeah. also still allow you to live. Love it. So she really made who I am. How close are you with your mom? Very close. And your dad is a bestie. Very, like, I see this because I think coming to, to dad as a, as a manager, but also being your dad, yeah. how do you draw the you know father daughter artist manager relationship how where do you draw the line at the times you're just like it's so blurry and now you struggle maybe sometimes to voice your, your opinion because yeah. it's dad yeah it is dad i think i've had that challenge before but i've kind of learned how to really communicate how i feel in the most respectful but way yeah. at the end of the day at first it was really a thing because now it's like i can't scream and i can't fire you and i can't be whatever sure. you know <laughs> i can't fire you yeah. like Baba, i'm actually done yes. i'm out right yes. but i've learned to kind of communicate in yeah. the most like okay Baba, this is making me feel like this yeah. i don't like this and now we can we've learned because he will also regard mm. but when we fighting everybody in the team just knows that's how you get yeah because at the end of the day when we together it's, it's back to normal of course. yeah that's blood I love it. Okay, cool. So I think one of the things that stood out for me was at the shoot where you spoke about spirituality and yeah. the importance of God is that how you ground yourself is that where you find true expression. Mm -hmm. Wait, please repeat that again. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm just shooting. like they have so when we were shooting right yeah. I think one of the things that you, you mentioned was like there, were, there was a conversation that we had about spirituality about God yeah. and I found it so profound because you're very young and I found there was so much wisdom that I got from you and I was like oh there's a lot of self-awareness there's a lot of depth in spirit yeah. you know um, is that something that you cultivate do you pray how do you stay grounded guys I'm really big on God um, mm. even recently like at first it was a thing of obviously I've made a fisted life but I still I think going through my depression two years ago, that was the only space that I could actually find myself in. But I was led to actually by Moosley. Mm. Yeah, she was really like a person of like, let's pray, let's whatever. And then recently it's just the thing I'm I'm finding the Bible pretty interesting. Yeah. Like it's like eh, there was a David who was cross A hey, it's going down, you know? <laughs> so it's just like I love it. You kinda need to know the person, yeah, your God and somebody that you believe in because mm. it's like you know there's a God but you actually don't understand Absolutely. who he is yeah. at the end of the day. But yeah, I'm really big on spirituality. And then you God mentioned anything. You mentioned depression, which is something so important. Yeah. I mean mental health is something that is ravaging a lot of us and yeah. young people. And we've seen it, especially like in the entertainment industry, where people just, you know, take their lives. Yeah. Um, are you in therapy? Well, I did. I tried therapy for a year. I do need to go back. But um, I think depression, after my couple of sessions, I started realizing that you need to be very self-aware. Absolutely. So I've learned how to kind of break things down of, okay, I was actually depressed when this and this happened yeah. and whatever. And you know so now your triggers. Now I know my triggers, what not to interact with. But I do think therapy sh- does play a big part in who you are but also kind of praying does because at the end of the day if i'm just going to decide like yo it's going down but i have no control your god please just handle this for me mm-hmm. it becomes way better because it's just like you know he's going to handle it because mm-hmm. two months down the line you see an aunt Zahori, god please please For take sure. me from people somebody yeah. stole my money what happened mm-hmm. Th- that that thing will, can get you depressed because now it's like oh damn i'm lonely i don't know who to trust yeah. right yeah. but now if you pray about it like yo god please reveal a yeah. therapist can't come in and reveal like don't trust bunny Absolutely. you know Absolutely. Yeah. yes <laughs> of course there's certain but things they just give you tools to, to, to cope and be you know and survive so i think but i think in, in for people that don't really understand what mental health is especially looking at how prosperous you are yeah. you're young you're beautiful you're vibrant you are everywhere in the world yeah you're one of the most booked artists <laughs> So people won't understand like, oh, she's depressed. How uh, is that so, making sense? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But for people who don't really understand the, the gravity of mental health, how would you describe it to those people? Because, or rather, what even gets you low? Like, what, what, and how do you pull yourself out of that low? Yes, I understand the prayer part of it. Yeah. But like, how do you, in that moment when you are in it, Yeah. what, what do you do? I think right now I've also been kind of surrounded by people that I can, it's obviously my dad, my mom. I've really got into to my family because yeah. I've lost all my friends obviously they kind of fucked me up but I got it I got closer to family and now it's the thing of I don't actually deal with stuff alone anymore because mental health I've also realized you live in your mind yeah. you feel however you feel and you don't say anything to anyone and that's what builds on you know because you could be even if it's a thing of you're insecure about your career like guys I feel like I'm falling off what's happening you know you shy to say stuff normal. like that it's a real thing a real but thing. if you can really tell like Baba this is how I'm feeling your dad will always try to make you see stuff differently like I know that you're seeing that but have you seen that tree oh I know how you're feeling like that but have you seen that it's really important to have people that can kind of shift yeah somebody said that sometimes our perspective does mess up how we see Hi, things because how i see something i'll be like oh but i i don't think i'm hot enough and when you guys are you're just like yo your body's fine like, like, <laughs> but, like come <laughs> on like so those low insecurities that we all have and have I mean, they could be different for other people but i think it's it's those things you really yeah. just need people yeah. that are there to redirect your shift like mm-hmm. don't look at worlds from one perspective because it will really yeah how, what's what has been your biggest heartbreak my biggest heartbreak is it are we talking about love any family heartbreak. could be any something that that you thought ah uh, yeah one uh, uh, yeah it's the end <laughs> your heartbreak i think it's just obviously ending i think my biggest heartbreak was losing somebody that i really thought would be in my life forever yeah and recently it's kind of like been happening where it's like me losing people that i really love whether it's friends whether it's whatever really yeah. i think that's my biggest heartbreak because 
you always have plans with those people. You always want to see those people grow and prosper. Mm -hmm. And now, Jiggy G, that person's not around anymore. That sucks. It's like you're mourning an, an alive person. Yeah. So it's kind of, I that's, think that's, that's been... That's awful. That's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, of your, of your peers, you're one of the most remarkable and most memorable names. Uh, you, had, you know, you, you, you have a lot to achieve. Um, who, still, who would you like to work with? Like, who do you still want to work with? Because I feel like you've done a lot. But you mm. still do a lot more. Wait, in piano or just in the world? Just generally. I would like to personally work with Arista. Mm. I would like to work I with. I love her. I love her. I think she's amazing. I'd like to work with Wafla, Gogo. Yay. Yeah, they're still like dope women yeah. overseas. Maybe a Chloe Bailey. Nice. Doja Cat, I wanted yeah, yeah. to. Nice. I think it would be a dope combo. I just don't know spiritually where she stands, so and I'm loyal to God, so right now it's just giving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A, big, it's a tricky situation, yeah. you know. But, but she's dope. Like, she's it's a really dope. Insane. She's one yeah. of like the greatest Dodge I can. I think that would be life changing. That would be amazing. Yeah, and then as for male genre, Drake would be dope. Mm -hmm. And maybe black coffee, I think I'd like that. Yeah. A black coffee one. But no, that's don't. nice. So um, what are some of the challenges you've had to face in the industry? I mean, as young as you are, as new as you are in the yeah. industry, but like, you know, I don't think it's been smooth sailing. Yeah. What, what, what are some of those things that you think, mm, yeah, that was quite a challenge. I think one of the biggest challenges in the industry is growing in front of people's eyes. Yeah, yeah. that must be hard. That's hard because it's just like, you can't expect me to still be 19, guys. Like, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Yeah. But that has been one of my biggest challenges because I'm growing, I'm adapting, I'm changing. And now it's like you're changing in front of people's eyes. Yeah. Everybody's watching everything that you do. Yeah. But some people are still attached to certain versions of you that don't exist anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, your work is high intensity. When do time find time for yourself don't answer that because we went through that yes. much and mark is gonna remove that part Please. <laughs> but because um yeah I, i'm so i'm just asking because based on the flow of the of the Other conversation question. right um so we've done like a lot of these ones um and then we spoke about your dad we spoke about your career oh actually let's talk about your career highlights i feel like you've done everything you've been all over the world you've been yeah. to paris and paris is your favorite you know city yeah. in the world um so what what are some of your highlights when you look at yourself and just like yeah i did that I'm yo career highlights career yeah. highlights black panther yeah that was dope that's like power. yo yo yeah, yeah that's Move yeah. forever, <laughs> like or kind of it forever. Change, or kind of forever. So I like, yeah. used to watch it. So I think Black Panther has been one of the biggest one. My first yeah. performance in London, Beautiful. mainly because of like the struggle that I had to go through mm. to get there, and also the viral moment that happened after being there. Mm. Uh, my other career highlights. Hmm. I think it's just still being a boss and standing, man. Like yeah. you guys don't see what goes. Hey, they are bomber sometimes, but yeah. it's still. Holding up a and good people don't price. have like an idea of what happens. Nothing the scenes, ever. You know, they look at you and they look just, just like, oh, she's got it all together. Oh my gosh! They never think that you're probably trying to quit two hours before this interview. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. And yeah, it's one of those things. So, um, how important is a good team in building a brand as solid as yours? Because you've built quite a solid brand, and mm -hmm. I know you've got like a formidable team behind you. Yes. But like, how important is picking the right people? And how do you even know that these are the right people? Sure. I think I, I go according to job mm -hmm. if you can deliver. So it's like I go according to if I've seen you deliver the best work, you are yeah. a good team player because you would never you you are responsible for what you do. So if Bonnie is responsible for interviewing and you've seen Bonnie interview at her best, mm -hmm. she's a good team player. Yeah. But most importantly, it's really important to have a hardworking team. Yeah. And that's the hardest part in finding in teams because not everybody's hardworking. And good people. Good people, genuine people, good hearts. But I've just realized whether you have a good heart or a bad heart, it'll always cut, come down crumbling if the intention behind it changes. People yeah. change all the time, intention changes. So yeah. whether that person started off good, I okay i mean so do people that have known you for a long time treat you differently if you go to like family occasions so they're like oh this guy will... no no she can't wash the dishes she's going yeah <laughs> like life has changed i won't lie i won't lie like oh privilege now huh no privilege now but oh no she can't mop the floor she's supposed to no 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 guys like my family has always treated me the same i've always yeah. been a girl I can talk to you and I can more be like, yeah. yeah. I've always just taught my family that. Yeah. But I think with my sib, with not my siblings, with my siblings, it's changed because 
day to day now of a more of i mean your siblings look up to you but now it's like more of like yeah that's my sister and yeah. their lives are changing in high school yeah. so it's like yeah but yeah life has changed like it's a change of it <laughs> <laughs> It's not cheap. It's not cheap. I love it. Okay, so what what else can we look forward to? I mean, you are working on new music. Yeah. What else can we look forward to? So I think new music, new ventures of business. Uh, I'm trying to get into a new space of myself. So nice. like maybe a rebirth would be dope. I don't know what's what gonna happen. What does that mean? What is a rebirth for Kamu? Rebirth for Kamu. Like? Yeah. Hmm. If I could just change the whole, I think. Right now, a rebirth would be elevating from what the usual Gabon Pera would be. Mm. And obviously, it's like a filter name, four years, whatever. But what is the next That's set the next of... Level. Yeah, what oh. is the next level? Is it you're an international superstar now doing big features? Mm. Is it a thing of you're a big businesswoman taking advantage of that space? Mm. Is it you're giving back now to the people that look up to you? Yeah, I just I'm ready for the next chapter of... But it needs to be bigger, like yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, fully. I mean, it has to. Don't wait. Can't be going back. No, 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 no. no there's, there's, there's no way. There's no going back from no, this. No, I can't go back. No. So, what makes you happy? Um, what truly makes you happy? Like, what, what brings you joy? Love and peace, honestly. Are you at peace now? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Are you happy? I'm happy. I think I'm happy. Yeah. Usually at first it would be the cool, chili, the white lady, what? Mm -hmm. But I think you grow out of certain stuff, and you just realize like appreciating people that you love mm -hmm. is really more important than anything else. Mm -hmm. So love and peace. I'm trying to be at peace. If I could get to that point in my life, I think I'd be fine. And what brings you to tears? What what really gets to you? What gets to me is losing. Yeah. Whether it's losing a career, whether it's losing a friend, whether it's losing just anything that's comes with losing i don't really handle it well yeah yeah i don't take fa failure very well like that will just crush me like i'll go into straights and how but, do you deal with that i mean you are i mean life is about winning and losing right? yeah in between you mm -hmm. know so what happens when you don't get your way and i understand you young you and you work very hard yeah so at times you won't understand why you're not getting psyche so what do so you do I, my team steps in mm -hmm. that's why you need a great team so mm -hmm. even if you can disappear for a month yeah they can still keep your stuff running but you do kind of because it's hard bro like yeah if you're gonna be putting in the work and it doesn't really come sure. off at that time that's scary and how do you deal with social media um the pressure of social media because i feel like there is there are people with opinions yeah. of how you're supposed to be who you are who you've been i mean you, you mentioned how people still want you to be the 19 year old that you broke out as yeah and it's not going to be like that you're yeah. still going to evolve and grow and discover parts of yourself mm. uh, that matter to you and cultivate the person that you want to be yeah. in the world uh but how do you then deal with people's opinions of it and sometimes they could be unkind yeah sometimes they're, they're really, very honest exactly yeah but how do you take that i don't interact mm -hmm. i don't interact i've always like it took a while for me to get that first it was a thing of i'd look at like people are so me but now i don't interact because the only reason they can say something is because i became something mm -hmm. so if you're still gonna allow those opinions to yeah kind of have impact in your life yeah. then you're kind of watching other people apart from doing what your purpose is yeah purpose has no opinions absolutely no okay and that's how we wrap it up thank you thank you, thank you.